going to start that again so we get the recorder going. Hey, everybody. <laughs> my name is Dr. Harlan Kilstein, and I'd like to welcome you for a webinar about meditation. Uh, we've got a special guest, Wendy Friesen, who is one of the master teachers of meditation uh, in the world, and she has graciously accepted to be with us tonight. Uh, before we get started, I always like to know, um, we do a little sound check. Um, if you've never been on a webinar before, over on the right-hand side, you will see something that um, lets you type in questions. So um, can you see my screen and can you hear me? Type in your answers. Okay. Melanie says yes. Eric, Dale, okay, we've got a lot of yeses coming in. Great. Um, and I always love to know, uh, yes to both, I always love to know where people are calling in from. Let us know where, where you are. Michigan, okay. Pr Princeton, Minnesota, South Dakota, College Park, Maryland, Los Angeles, New Jersey. Uh, Sacramento, another New Jersey, Singapore, thank you, all the way from Singapore, uh, St. Anne, Missouri, Minneapolis. Wow, they're still coming in. Um, well, great. I'm really happy that you've joined us. Um, I've known Wendy, um, I'm guessing now, going on probably 16 or 17 years. And Wendy is probably known primarily as the world's most popular hypnotherapist. Uh, from the people that she's seen personally to uh, the people that she has um, helped through her recordings, she's probably assisted more than a million people around the world in change. And that number if anything, is probably on the low side. You know, if you count all the recordings that people are passing around to one another, um, it, it's it's probably 10 times that. So um, I'd like to um, welcome Wendy and everybody um, stick around because you're going to learn some really valuable things. We got a bunch of questions here tonight. We're going to get them answered. And we're going to take your questions as well. Now, anytime that you have a question, you can type it into the question box on the right-hand side. Uh, and at an appropriate time, um, I'll be very happy to, um, uh, to read that to uh, Wendy and get an answer. Uh, but stick with us. Um, one of the things about meditation is it involves really a focus of attention. So I'm going to invite you to really benefit from this, uh, from this webinar, from this teaching, to power down the electronics. Um, Facebook, Facebook uh, Twitter, and Instagram will survive without you for a few moments. Um, Power down, turn off your ringers on your cell, you know, when people want to get in touch with you. It's okay if they wait a few minutes because what you're going to learn is tonight is something that has the very potential to change your life. Now, um, for those of you who are on the call now, um, tell me, um, if for those of you who already meditate, uh, tell me if you meditate and what kind of meditation you do. Go ahead and type it in there. Just really want to get an idea of who's here. Like if there's a Zen master on the call, I'd kind of want to know. <laughs> okay. Okay. A mindfulness meditation. Great. And if you don't meditate at all, but you've been thinking about it, type in uh, newbie or want to learn. Newbie? Okay, newbies are welcome. Wendy, are newbies welcome? 
Another newbie. Another oh, we newbie. like them all. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah, especially if you're new to this, because uh, a lot of the things you're going to learn are ways to actually, you know, do this, even if you think you can't. Okay. We have some, a lot of newbies, transcendental meditation, newbie wanting to learn. When I try to meditate, my mind wanders. I think we're going to cover that, Dale. Christian meditation, newbie wants to learn. Okay, great. We're in the right place. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, first of all, to anticipate your question, there will be a recording of this, and we'll we'll do this. There's William also says he's a newbie. Um, so let's get going. Um, Wendy, tell us a little bit about your background, your background in hypnosis, um, and your background in meditation, and what motivated you to just be teaching meditation around the world? Well, first I want to really, really thank you for putting this together, Harlan, and I have just really enjoyed all the things we've talked about and the ideas we've been working on, and just thank you, thank you for putting this webinar on. So meditation is very different than hypnosis, and as people might know, I've been doing hypnosis over 20 years, and I specialize in drug and alcohol addiction, and right now my passion and my purpose is to help people understand how to use your brain, your mind, the specific methods of hypnosis and meditation to get over drug and alcohol addiction because we have this incredible crisis you know all worldwide but especially in the US with drug and alcohol addiction but anyway let's get before, into what on, before before you go on I just want to stop there for a second okay. now there's some very even though we're not really talking about drug and alcohol whatever we are focusing on the potential of the mind to create change and some of the accepted and proven techniques such as group meetings or rehab, um, offhand, what's their success rate? Well, a lot of people think that it's um, 40, 50, 60 percent. Some will even say it's 80, but the truth is, and the researched numbers are that uh, typical 12-step AA treatment is 5 to 7 percent. And if you're going to a rehab center that will cost thirty to fifty thousand for a month, they just use AA and twelve step, and their verified success rates are five to seven percent. Okay, so um, so you are on a mission because when I met you last, this has definitely become a mission of yours to help as many many people as around the world get free from um, addiction. Uh, from drug addiction, from alcohol addiction, and your program is just acclaimed for a huge amount of, of success. So um, is, is meditation a tool in helping people change? Yeah, meditation really is the core foundation. No matter what other change work you're doing, you need to be doing your meditation and hopefully daily, but you need to keep it as simple as possible to start out so that you won't get frustrated or you won't think, oh, I can't do this, or you think, well, my mind wanders and my mind races too much. I can't get it to quiet down, but that's the whole point, and that's why you need it even more. So there's some really simple ways you can get started with it. Now, before we go on, You've been doing hypnosis and um, your website and Lord knows radio commercials, whatever. Um, how did you get into hypnosis? Well, mostly it was because my own frustration with my own life and um, not feeling like I had the tools that I needed and feeling very depressed, being really broke and a single mom and just so frustrated. So I went to a hypnosis school in town and they luckily took small payments from me because I didn't have any money. But once I started realizing that you know if you if you create the thing you want, you feel it and experience it and make it as real as you can and then you attach it to something that becomes this driving force and this like hidden motivation, your subconscious does things that make you not only motivated but stop procrastinating and stop self-sabotage but it is still a matter of getting into that meditative state and so for me what happened was that I started practicing daily the meditation mindfulness and hypnosis and my business just took off I was having a lot of fun helping a lot of people and doing things that were so rewarding that I never imagined I could do in my life okay well 
let's jump in because everybody's eager to learn something. But before we do, I want you to know that Wendy has a gift for you. Um, and for those of you who stay on our webinar, you will be getting a valuable gift. And guess what? It's about meditation. So stick <laughs> around as we go forward because Wendy has something for you. Um, okay. I find that a lot of people, when they talk about meditation, it's like my way or the highway, that their way of meditation is the only way of meditation uh, that there is. Uh, you know, I talked about focusing on breath once on my Facebook page, and I nearly got clobbered. Uh, because people are saying, no, 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 you're not supposed to focus on the breath. You're supposed to focus on nothing. And then other people said, um, you have to have your eyes closed. And then other people say, well, then how can you pay attention to what's going on around you if your eyes are closed? So first of all, let's deal with this perfection concept. Wendy, is there more than one way for people to meditate? There is, you know, and sometimes if we're just sitting out on the beautiful green grass and looking at the sky and watching a cloud move slowly over the sky, we, we go into a state of meditation because everything else tends to just fall away from us and we bring our singular focus to this one thing. Now, true meditation is the absence of thought. So having no thought, which, yeah, good luck with that, but <laughs> having the absence of thought is actually true meditation. So the really high-level meditators try to get themselves to go from a fraction of a second where there's no thought to having no thought for two or three seconds or going even longer. And as all of you know, when you close your eyes and try to empty your mind, what happens? It gets even busier in there. It's like everything comes in and says, oh, let's have a little party. So, you know, one of the things is to know that if your eyes are open and you're laying in the grass looking at the sky, you can be in meditation. If you're sitting on your couch, if you're laying on the floor, if your eyes are closed, if they're open. Personally, I like people to close their eyes because I want to cut off as much stimulation as I can. And we want it to be very quiet or have some music that is actually meditation music as well. Okay. Um, so back to this idea of perfection. Is it possible that person A could use one method, person B could use a different method, person C use even a third method, and yet they're all meditating and no one's doing anything wrong? Oh, for sure. Like for people who do transcendental meditation, it is it requires a lot of work and a lot of dedication, and it's very specific to what you're experiencing the different levels, you know. And if you do mindfulness meditation, it's a very simple way to continue to get your mind into that state so that you can relieve the stress and just really be present. Um, you know, if you're studying Buddhist meditation, you've got a whole different set of experiences that you're going to have. So we're going to go with. The simplest, which is you know very popular right now, is to what they call mindfulness. And mindfulness is a form of meditation. And then I'm going to help you understand how to take that into creating that no thought area so that you're teaching your brain to quit having all the clutter, all the multitasking, all the bombardment that causes stress, and get you to find that silence. So that's our objective today, is to get you started with that. OK. So. Um... Now, there are different brain waves, just so you guys understand, that on a level that is measurable um, with the right equipment, there are different brain waves. When you are wide awake, alert, whatever, we say that your brain is in the beta state. When you are reflexive, reflecting about things, maybe thinking about, um, something that um, I don't know your your spouse said to you or um, your kid said to you that made you feel really good. Um, you might be in the alpha state, also known as the creative state. Um, below that comes the theta state. The theta state is the brain waves are are moving typically um, below seven megahertz. And then when you get below two megahertz, you're pretty much in delta, and delta is, is a state of sleep. Um, so the goal 
with meditation is interestingly to move from um, the state of beta where you're wide awake and alert and wondering what's going to happen. You know, if you're um, at a, a, a sporting event and your team is winning and everybody's up in the stand, you know, standing up in the stands, you can bet that not only are you in beta as well, um, all of the players are in beta because, you know, they want to win, they want to play, um, they want to score, whatever. Um, and that's a totally different state than being in theta and in hypnosis. And in when you're in that state of hypnosis, um, it's a matter of training your brain to recognize that state and stay in it. Um, and that's that state of meditation, uh, that state of hypnosis. That's what theta is all about. So um, we've discovered there's more than one way to meditate. We've talked about the different brain wave states. Um, what are the biggest benefits to meditation? Well, you know, there are thousands of scientific studies that have been done on meditation, and every time I see one, I'm still blown away. For instance, um, there was a study where people meditated for eight weeks and they did MRIs that showed that the gray matter concentration, so the growth of the gray matter in your brain after only eight weeks, was highly concentrated in the areas of learning and memory and regulating emotions. Think about that. We all need a little bit of that here and there to regulate our emotions, meaning you're not going to you know, get blown out of your, blown out by stress or by people doing things you don't like or unexpected events. And also perspective. So when we think that um, meditation changes your perspective or your ability to choose your perspective, the studies that they've done in pain, the um, Zen meditators, which is another form of meditation, they did an fMRI brain scan and it showed the level of pain in the brain and they actually subjected these people to pain and they felt less pain, the meditators, and they didn't have to be meditating at the time, it was just that their brain had been trained and they found they had greater pain reduction from that than from morphine. They had a 40% reduction in the intensity of pain that they were applying and I don't know what kind of pain they were subjecting them to but you could use your imagination. <laughs> They had a 57% reduction in the unpleasantness experience of the pain. So, you know, it goes on. This heart attack and stroke study really got my attention. Um, they took 200 high-risk subjects that were high-risk for stroke and heart attack. And then they had half of them in a meditation group, and the other group, as the, um, kind of the placebo group, took a health class. So after the five-year follow-up, now they weren't having to meditate the whole time for five years, but in a five-year follow-up, they had a 48% reduction in heart attacks and strokes in the group that were meditators. That is phenomenal that you could reduce your heart attack or stroke risk and also, obviously, death because you've been meditating. Now, there so are actually devices that basically force you to meditate and they are approved by the FTC um, to help lower high blood pressure. But it's basically, it's the meditation that's doing it. It's not the device. It is. It is. And hypnosis reduces blood pressure as well, and meditation as well. But the really cool part is after you're done meditating or doing hypnosis, your blood pressure stays lowered for several hours. The more you do it, the longer the period of time is that your blood pressure is lowered and you can get off of those very dangerous medications. So Eric has asked a question that was earlier, but this is a great place to um, ask it to you, is what's the difference between self-hypnosis and meditation? Yeah, and actually that's, um, I'm glad she asked that because that's our very first topic. So if any of you have paper or you have a blank page open on your computer and you want to take notes. Um, there's also one of your free gifts, I have more than one free gift today, but one of them is a book that I wrote on meditation. It's simple and it's short and it will get you from beginning to doing pretty good regular meditation. But anyway, so if you don't take notes, you can get this out of the book as well. True meditation is the absence of thought and hypnosis is the intentional thought that you create something specific that we want you to experience. So with meditation... Oh, hold on. In, Say that again. That sounded really brilliant. I need you to repeat that. 
<laughs> okay, so in, in meditation, we want the absence of thought. We're trying to achieve no brain activity, which is very difficult to do, but you just start very simple, where hypnosis is guiding your thought to a specific feeling or outcome or experience, and, and then getting your brain to actually have activity in the area of the experience you want to have. Okay, I just want to ask you guys out there, do you understand the difference now between hypnosis and meditation? And now, I'm seeing some oh, bunch of yeses coming in, so that's great. Yeah. So there's a lot of people who do guided meditations, and that's not really meditation. What that is is or self-hypnosis. So when people say guided meditations, they're really not they're not using the term right. So we want to still look at getting that true meditation. What I want people to achieve is that space of having no thought and getting more and more and more of that because that seems to be what has some really long-term health effects, including living longer because of these telomeres. And I'm not going to go into the big explanation of the telomeres, but um, those are on the ends of our DNA strands and they determine how long we're going to live. Now, it's interesting and we're not going there but what Wendy mentioned is probably some of the most exciting research that's going on today in anti-aging. And they are working and playing with telomeres today. And doctors are convinced that harnessing this literally is the answer to adding 20 to 40 years to, to people's lives. If you talk to doctors who are on the cutting edge of this research, they swear that um, as they get hold of this technology, um, people they're going to think that people living to 100 is young. So Wendy it was sharing with you some of the really um, uh, good things. Now, Dale asks, um, I'll be 70 in July, so happy birthday in advance. Will meditation help me with my health? Boy, yeah, that it sure will because your immune system is directly affected by the stress in your body, the conflicts that you have, and the um, busyness of your brain. So all of these things suppress your immune system. And we have evidence to show that your immune system is dramatically changed when you meditate or when you're doing mindfulness or hypnosis. So it's going to help your health mainly because your immune system. We also know that things like um, cancer cells are actually affected by the thoughts and the specific negativity or positivity in our life. So when you're meditating and you're releasing that stress, you're giving your body a chance to increase your immune system, fight off the things that are in there, and keep yourself healthier. Okay. So we've covered some of the biggest benefits. We see that it's in the current, there's a lot of research. Um, the more accomplished you become in meditation, the, um, the more you're going to notice the changes in you. If you were a person who had, um, you know, a low stress level, if you're a person who, let's say you're in your car and you experience uh, road rage from time to time, if, if you start to meditate, you're going to start to notice that it's going to affect every area of your life. So, if, yeah, remember when I was saying the perception that you grow more gray matter in one of the areas that is perception. So, with road rage, road rage is just a matter of perception, right? It's whether you perceive that person to be an asshole or if you perceive them to be just another stupid driver, but your reaction to it has changed because of the perception. And by meditating, you change the way you perceive the world around you. Yeah, there's a classic example of someone relaxing in a, a rowboat in the middle of the lake. They're stretched out in their rowboat, just enjoying the sun, completely at peace. And uh, something bumps into their boat and they sit up all angry and they turn around prepared to yell at whatever idiot bumped into their boat. And they see that it's actually a boat that floated off from shore, became untied, and happened to bump into them. And the anger that they were feeling just goes and like, oh, it's just a boat. It's not someone that I have to vent on. So meditation has that same kind of 
perceptual shift. Like, there's nothing here for me to really get upset about. Exactly. Um, okay. So the second part. Oh, we oh. got Rachel. Rachel wants to pick you up on that and is saying, you mentioned increase in gray matter in the brain. I recently went back to college and had a hard time with memorizing lessons. It, it sounds like meditation would be helpful for me in the upcoming semester. Yeah, so they did a test on um, people having test scores, and they had them take tests of various kinds before and after they did their meditations. And they found improved cognitive skills, but here's the really cool part. In these people who had done their meditation, they had test scores that were 10 times better than the control group, 10 times better. Also, the, they've um, shown that by following these people into older age, that the meditation actually offsets the loss of cognitive ability with old age. And I read an article just today that said they're showing that it seems to stave off Alzheimer's. I'm not sure how they know that for sure because that's really tough to have a, you know, a test group or control group. But test scores are 10 times better because you meditated. That yes. is absolutely incredible. Now, I do recall back in my old hypnosis days, I used to treat high school kids who had low SAT scores, and I would get them to relax, and then their scores would go up without any additional studying at all. Um, even yeah. the day before the test, scores would go up phenomenally. So yeah. obviously, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot to this as well. Let's go on to our next slide. And um, here's the, the number one thing that I hear. I heard you're not supposed to think when meditating. I can't turn my brain off. Yeah. So we need to practice to do that because we're all busy multitasking. It's kind of sad, really, when you're, you know, you're watching TV and you've got your laptop and then you just unconsciously grab your phone just to see what's on it. Or you see everybody sitting at dinner. They have to fiddle with their phones. And we've gotten our brain to be wired for all of this stimulation. So now we need to stop having that stimulation so we can increase the amount of time that our brain can slow down and allow all the benefits of meditation to happen. So the first thing you want to do if you were going to meditate as a very beginner is to get into a mindfulness state. Mindfulness means you're in the present moment. So this would be step one. You're noticing how your body feels. So whatever position you're in, you just become aware of your body and you get it to be relaxed. You could relax every part one at a time or just wait as each breath relaxes your body. That's that mindfulness right now observing your thoughts. And then the second step, as you're observing your thoughts, what do you do with them? You know, I mean, Harlan, when you meditate, do you have like a bombardment of all these things that are coming into your head? At the beginning, I could barely even sit to meditate. There were so many, there were so many thoughts that I th thought that of like, you know, having them stand in line and giving that, giving out numbers. Um, and I had to train my brain that sitting down for meditation was not the opportunity to think about all the things that I needed to think about, you know, taking yeah. your, taking your, your brain after multitasking and turning it off or turning it down is near impossible. Right. I was so in not, not that long ago, I'm sorry for stepping on you, I, and, and I, as I was walking down the street, it was right near Macy's and Herald Square, 34th Street, as I looked around, I couldn't find a single person who wasn't on their phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy what we're doing to our brains. Right. And then we wonder why we can't hold a thought or why we're stressed or we can't sleep at night. So the way to do this, and this will help you sleep at night as well, is to observe the thoughts. So it's hard to turn them off because our brains just don't work that way. But first you want to observe them. So you're, you're in a comfortable position. Lying down is not the best way because then you tend to fall asleep. But sitting up with your head supported is great. So you're going to observe your thoughts. And the way I like to teach people to observe them is when you, there's chatter in your brain or that you got to go to the, the store and get a loaf of bread or whatever, you gently let that thought float out in front of you and you let it float out until it just becomes kind of puffy and soft and the thought sort of dissolves into little tiny 
particles very gently because we don't want to push and we don't want to resist these thoughts. So as those thoughts come in, you allow them and just let them float out of your mind. That way you're doing something with them that isn't causing pressure and you're letting them dissolve and dissipate. And then at some point you might feel like, hmm, there's no thoughts there, although that would be a thought. <laughs> so then the next thing is certainly to pay attention to your breath. This is not a big mystery, but you get your breathing to be very calm and very soothing. And I like for people to focus on an object. Now in your meditation, you might allow that object to just appear to you in front of you, whatever is best for you today. And that object might be a beautiful jewel, or it might be a feather, or it might be a face, whatever it is. You just let yourself put your attention on that object, which also means you're not clearing your thoughts yet. You're still having thoughts. But you're going to notice that object. And then if you have some music, and it's got to be some really, really soft, quiet music, but if you have that, you're just going to let that float all around you. So now we're up to the, the third step. The first one was being mindful of what you're doing right now. How does your body feel? The second one was to notice your thoughts. Let them float out of your mind and out in front of you to dissipate. The third one is to begin to notice your breath, but choose an object that you can focus on and notice the sounds around you. So now if we're ready to continue, I want to teach everybody a kind of cool technique that tends to totally take the difficulty out of this. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. All right. So just wherever you're at, go ahead and close your eyes for a moment. And I'm going to teach you something that Terence Watts in England taught me many, many years ago. He calls it palm breathing. So if you were if you're sitting up, you want to put your palms upright, and you can put them on top of your knees or your lap. And with your palms facing up, make sure your fingers are very relaxed. And now I just want you to take a slow breath. And what I want you to let your mind do is just notice the palms, your open palms, and imagine that you could actually breathe in through the palms in your hands. And it's very strange at first, but it'll let your mind shift to something very unusual. So if you were breathing in through your palms, you would notice the air coming in through your palms, going all the way up through your arms, swirling through your body, through your lungs, swirling into your head, into your belly, into your legs. And every breath you take comes in through your palms. And it goes right back out, out of your palms. And then notice the sensation or the awareness of your palms, open, receiving breath, letting it out. Now as you breathe in through your palms, let that breath come in from some beautiful higher source. For you, if it is God, or if it is your wise sage, or whatever, whatever connection to the universe, it could be simply love that is flowing in in that breath. Let it come in through your palms. Swirl through your body and just float all through your body and back out. So you begin to notice that you've altered your awareness, that your only thought is on your breathing through your palms, the sensation and the relaxation and the awareness of being right here in this moment, breathing in through those palms, feeling that warmth. You might notice your fingertips are tingling, your palms are getting warm, and that soothing light that comes from that source is just flowing into your body, releasing you from thought, relaxing you and allowing you to begin to have the space between the thoughts. Space between the thoughts. So right now, just go ahead and open your eyes back up and just bring your awareness back here. So that's the short version of this technique that I really like because now you're not focusing on all these things that are bombarding your mind and all these other thoughts. And once you, you if you do this for several days in a row, you're going to crave this feeling of palm breathing and bringing that beautiful breath in from whatever your choice of your source is. So that's a really good one. I like that one a lot.
Okay, how many people here, um, how many people here noticed a change of state? Dale says, I heard your voice and saw my palms. What else, what yeah. other, what, what did you guys experience? So while they're typing, um, the next thing is, do you want that light to have a color when you're breathing in through your palms? For me, I like it to be purple. I just feel that purple has this really nice spiritual um, energy. And you might be surprised the color might change with every breath. And that's another way to let go of all the conscious thought and just get yourself to be right here and mindful, getting ready to experience a space between the thoughts. Fantastic. People are typing in, I noticed a change, calmness, peaceful. Um, I noticed stop, I stopped thinking as much. My light was bright white. It was peaceful. It was calm. Um, it was warm and tingling. So in just it, it, this is just to show you that in just a few moments, you can have this shift that affects your brain. And by continuing this and prolonging it, and making it a part of your life, um, you'll be prepared to notice many of the changes and benefits that Wendy uh, talked about earlier. Rachel said I was a light feeling, almost like I like a balloon head. Uh, my my hands warmed up, tingling, releasing tension in my shoulders. Okay, so um, more and more of people coming in saying, "Yes, I noticed it. I noticed a change." And, and that's yeah. fantastic. And that was only, we just did that for a couple minutes, and it wasn't without you having to listen to my voice. When you start doing it on your own, you're not going to have to have a voice guiding you. And that is the idea, is to not get the voice in there guiding you. So that was the fourth step. The fifth one is to start to observe and just be aware. You're not wanting to observe your thoughts so much because you don't want to invite more thoughts in there. I think if you're intentionally observing your thoughts, then you're, you're kind of getting more and more brain activity. But instead, I want you to observe the stillness. And so you observe, how do I notice stillness? And Wynn Wenger, who is just a genius, he had something called image streaming. Mm -hmm. So for image streaming, sometimes that kind of blows my mind. <laughs> but if you observe anything that's there and you begin to follow it, so you're not creating more busyness, but maybe you just observe that there is a single tree and you're doing nothing more, no expectations, but just observing that. And maybe your body suddenly floats over that tree and just rests on a cloud or something. So you observe that and you just stay with that and do that with no expectation. And you see how this is the opposite of hypnosis because I'm saying, okay, okay the tree, the cloud, the this, the that. But you're letting your mind just aware, be aware and explore and observe what's there. So that's the fifth step is you observe. And if you do it with this image streaming, the reason it's called that is because you're noticing an image. You're following it to wherever it goes very gently. And sometimes you'll get into like a totally lucid dream even though you're not asleep. But you'll be having the same state as that amazing lucid dreaming. But still, this isn't true meditation, is it? <laughs> Well, I have a question. We've been talking about the benefits, and we didn't even discuss this question, but I just think, are there any negative side effects to uh, meditation? Well, um, waves of bliss. No, that's not too negative. <laughs> Happiness that, no, no, without no. explaining. I'll take People waves of bliss. And say, Why are you smiling all the time? <laughs> Sleeping better. Yeah, I don't think there's anything negative that could come from it. I can't imagine. Well, I'm sure back in the hypnosis days, you got the question as I did, um, can you get stuck in hypnosis? I mean, can you get stuck in meditation? You know, never, never come out of the state of meditation. Just, you know, connect to nothingness and stay there for the rest of your life. Well, maybe it would be better than what we're doing here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to try that sometime. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to yeah, take so your answer is there are no negative side effects to meditation. Yeah. yeah not that I know. So the, um, the sixth step in my um, helping you to understand what you want to achieve with this 
Um, you know, and achieve is not the right word because the purpose is to not have any expectations or have an achievement, but your outcome or your feeling that you're going to get. So before you meditate, do you want to choose a feeling or a word that you're only going to just allow that feeling or that one word to kind of be your guide? So we're not going to busy our mind with, okay, I'm going to go into my future a year from now. Now, when I'm making money and I'm successful and my book is published, I'm on Oprah and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to do any of that. You're just going to choose a feeling or a word, and you're, maybe you don't know where it's going to go. So if your word <coughs> is love, for your meditation, for your 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you're just going to focus on love, either the feeling or a visual or just an experience of sparkling vibration of energy that feels like love and just gently bring your mind back to only that one word and I think this is how we're going to get to the training to get the space between the thoughts so in the meditation program that I made I made 30 different meditation sessions but I was having so much fun because I would guide you for a few minutes but then I'd give you one word and one thing you're just going to focus on and it's just silence and you get to focus on just one thing and then to get you to have the space between the thoughts and each day for 30 days you go for a, a bigger space between the thoughts so we're doing it very gradually okay fantastic let's go on to the next slide and that is what are the biggest challenges to meditation other than let's say the mind being so hyperactive what what are some of the other challenges that you've heard about you know it's gotta be our busy 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 brains and people are so freaking restless and it's really sad because our world is just bombarded with too much en entertainment and you know the, all the electronics and everything so that is definitely the challenge when someone said earlier I don't remember who it was maybe it was Daniel um, said I can't get my mind to quiet down and the only way you're going to achieve that is by being very consistent even doing the meditation let's say two or three times a day for only five minutes the repetition of doing that will get you to the point even if you feel it's really really difficult at some point it's going to get your brain to go ah and and to me it feels like all of a sudden everything's fading away off to the sides and there's this space of nothing and in that space of nothing is what some people call that bliss and that bliss feeling is just it, it makes you float it gets you to this state where there is nothing and it's it's amazing but it sometimes it's only there for just a few seconds at first but that is where you've got to start and that's the obstacle and the biggest challenge for people for sure I think a lot of people walk around in their mind with a to-do list of all the things that they need to accomplish today, tomorrow, the rest of their life, things that they need to accomplish on for for a loved one, for a child, for a, a parent. And it's really hard to get people to put away the to-do list for even a few minutes. It's right. like there with them. They carry it um, with them everywhere they go. And a lot of people are just unwilling to put the to-do list off to the side for a few moments. You know, they yeah. think that they're going to miss out. One of the things that we are very good at doing is turning just about everything into a competition. When I started to learn yoga, um, the, the number one rule that I learned was keep your eyes on your own mat. doesn't matter what the person next to you is doing. You just focus on your mat and you'll be fine. And then later on, I found out that there was like competitive yoga uh, where people were judged. I was like, wait a minute. Yoga is all against judgment. Why would you go into a competition about who's going to be the best yoga person? And I think in the area of meditation, a lot of people go in with expectations that on day one, they're going to meditate like a Zen monk. And if they don't, um, it, it, they're doing something wrong, or or they yep. just can't do it. Yeah, that's really true. You know, and so they give up too fast. But it takes a bit of training to get your mind to go to that space between the thoughts, and just remember that that's what you really want to experience is the space between the thoughts. And every time you do it, the 
a little greater and a little greater. So that's why I got so excited about making 30 different meditation sessions and in each one giving people a little more space and a little more space. So they actually might be achieving that state of bliss and having their brain really make some energetic shifts. That's, um, that's really good. And, and, and you've been getting some pretty impressive results on that. I've seen what people wrote in and talked about that um, people are making significant changes in their lives. But it's interesting that the brain chooses what it wants to focus on, what it wants to work on. Yeah, it does. And so if you just choose one word or one thought, and that's going to be your thought for that, your your mind is going to go to the thing that has the most need or that's giving you the most stress or attention or energy. So if you have a different word or different feeling that you're going to focus on, you know, whatever is, you know, hanging out deep in there that needs to be released, it's going to happen. And there are ways to let those things go. And again, we're trying to achieve the space between it. So if there's something that comes up and you see this image of, um, I don't know, a turtle, and you allow yourself to just observe and notice why it's there and get whatever message of what it means for you. Maybe it's telling you to slow down. Maybe it's telling you you're going too damn slow. <laughs> but you'll wait for your message. You'll let it dissolve and let it float away and let something else replace it. So a message comes into you in the form of one word that says um, focus. So maybe it's about focus and you just let yourself dwell on that and let that float away and know that your subconscious mind is understanding the full depth of these messages but always wanting to achieve the space between those thoughts. Okay, So letting the stuff observe it, be aware of it, bless it and let it go. You know, I'm going to bring up something again similar from the hypnosis background. Is there there are a lot of people who said, "Oh, I can't be hypnotized. I can't be controlled by others." Um, could you discuss meditation and a um, people who quote just can't meditate, or people who think that in meditation they're subject to someone's control? Well, meditation is typically something you do alone. Um, and it's rarely an actual guided experience if it's actually going to be meditation. So you wouldn't, wouldn't be feeling like you're probably under someone's control. Um, you might be more tentative about, well, where will this take me? What if I like go really deep in my meditation? Or what if I feel like I'm levitating or I'm weightless? Or what if I experience some you know vision that is just beyond what I could comprehend? I think that might be something that people think about. But in my mind, I think I would want to achieve that. I would want to experience that because I want to have a higher wisdom and I want to have this more amazing and profound connection with whatever it is that connects us all and with you know the love and the wisdom and the highest creativity that I can have. So I want to experience those states. So I think like with hypnosis, you know, people think, oh, I'm under someone else's control. And yeah, there's lots of people who will still think that. And there's others who have gotten um, a lot of education about it and understand that this isn't a control thing. It's about creating the changes in your mind that you want. and You're actually always um, able to snap out of it or be in control. I'm pretty sure that you heard people saying, oh, it's of the devil um, and stuff like that. Um, cause I heard it enough times and sometimes yeah. I was able to convince people and sometimes they went off believing that it was of the devil, but over the centuries and thousands of years, people have used, um, uh, meditation to deepen their, um, spiritual experience, no matter what religion they are, are from there. People who have been doing this in every religion um, and it just takes them deeper. So whatever you are, you know, if you're a Christian and you want to focus on um, your relationship with Jesus, um, if you are Jewish and you want to focus on, some, doesn't matter what the religion is, meditation is not something that gets in the way or, or takes you away from who you are. It just allows a, a deeper, more, um, spiritual connection. Let's move up yeah. to the next slide here. 
so many kinds of meditation. I just listed a few here. Mantra meditation or TM, Zen meditation, mindfulness, breath meditation, guided meditation. You've talked about it, but could you just go through and maybe give a little description of what each is and, um, you know, pluses, minuses, especially for people starting out because there were so many newbies. Yeah, so the tr uh, Transcendental Meditation, the TM, uses a mantra. Um, they give you the mantra when you're in the training and they choose a mantra that's specific to you. And then there's some very high levels that TM takes you to. And there's even people who um, do this flying thing where they, like, levitate, kind of. They're called the cool. city. The city. Yeah. you gotta, you got to Google that and see them, like, bouncing around. That's pretty cool. Um, Zen meditation, you know, a lot of what we talked about of finding what it is that, it, that you need right now. Mindfulness, which is so popular, popular because you're in the moment. And, you know, like, Google has a mindfulness coach that travels from – headquarters to headquarters doing mindfulness training. Mindfulness is being here and now and observing what's happening now, letting go of the stress and uh, doing a breath meditation which we talked about you know that you're doing something that is this breathing but connect the breathing to something greater and bigger so if you needed creativity every breath in is going to be a breath from that creative source and guided meditation which isn't true meditation but it's extremely effective in helping you to achieve the states of mind that you want and getting healthier and happier okay that's um that's that's a really good summary um again we've discussed this but since i hear it so many times what if i don't meditate correctly what if i do it well, god forbid yeah, yeah. So it, there's no incorrect way to do it. Just, you know, if you're not comfortable sitting in those positions like those people are, you know, go ahead and sit on the couch, um, but don't lay down flat because that tends to put our brains to sleep. Uh, but, you know, but do it in whatever way it's comfortable for you and know that there's there's no wrong way to do it. It's just achieving the space between the thoughts, which, you know, I can help you with that because you can always come to my Facebook page and ask me questions. And then the little book that we're going to give you in a few minutes. Um, and then there is the first meditation is also free as well. So you're going to get those tools and you're going to do it maybe correctly. And there's many ways to get it right. <laughs> now, in most of the photos that I've been displaying tonight, you see people holding their hands in a unique way that's called a mudra. Do you have to hold your hands in any particular way? Obviously, we had our palms open for the uh, palm breathing meditation, but is it a requirement that you have your hands in a specific place or like we see? Yeah, well, I don't know um, if you do this when you meditate or not, but there is an energy that flows through you and having your, your thumb and finger together is help, part of that flow of energy and connecting that flow of energy. It closing, so, closing the circuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's nice. I think it feels like I'm actually participating in that current or that, you know, that electrical flow or the light that if I'm doing the palm breathing, the light that's coming in. Oh, great. Um, so Wendy has discussed one of the questions that people are, they don't ask they don't ask themselves it, but it's a question that goes to the core of who we are and what we're doing with ourselves. And that question is, do you love your life? Take a moment or two, take a moment or two, and just think about that question that I just asked you. It's Wendy's question. Do you honestly love your life? Do you wish that um, your life could be better? In golf, if you take a shot and it doesn't go well, um, they have something that's called a mulligan, which is like a do-over. Um, if, if you had your life, if someone came up to you and said, would you like to do your life over what would you say? Would you say, no, my life now is exactly the way I want it to be? Or 
um, would you say I would go with the do-over? So type in your answer, the same or do-over. Boy, you ask really good questions, hard ones. <laughs> okay, so people are saying, um, I love my life, but something is missing, only some parts. Um, I love my um, uh, life, but I miss my wife who passed away almost three years ago. I'd marry her again. Um, the same, do-over. People are typing in do-overs, do-overs, do-over, 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 not entirely, but a lot. Uh, I'd pretty much want it the same. I would want to do over. There's certain things I would do over. Um, is that your the answers that we got of most people wanting a do over? Is that familiar to you? Boy, it is, and it depends on your age too. I think um, I'm noticing that people over fifty are having a really tough time with boredom and life purpose you know and we used to be working on the farm and doing things that took all our time and all our energy but now people are supposed to have a purpose and they're supposed to be loving their life and have their passion and I notice a lot of people over 50 are feeling really empty I mean just profoundly empty so if that's something that any of you are going through you're not alone and the, I've been talking to people lately about this as I'm going like really all these people when you're in your 50s, something happens where, you know, not for everybody, but you kind of lose your, you lose your drive, you lose your passion, um, and you float around kind of aimlessly. Wow. And, and there was a, soci I remember this, it was something, there were very few things that stood out in college, but I had to take a sociology class when I was a freshman, and we studied um, a French philosopher by the name of Durkheim. And Durkheim said that um, one of the things that people um, were very upset about was just the absence of meaning in their lives. And, you know, if you, we go up to people and say, do you love your life? The question is, it just stops people. Um, yeah. Because it's a powerful question, and and more often than not, you know, if you ask people, they will say, "Well, maybe some parts." But we saw so many people would do it over. Wendy, yeah. is it possible to take someone from where they are and to get them to love their life? Well, I think so. And I had on the the thirtieth day of the meditation that I made and I created. Um, I had just such a huge shift when I finished recording it. I was feeling the most immense love I had ever felt. It's just love for everything and just that connection. And a result of making 30 different meditations and um, getting to the final one being love, that it is the energy of the spiritual essence of what we crave. And it was it was a beautiful thing. Um, I would say that I wasn't in the beginning in the best state of mind, and I was making the program because I thought, how do we, if we would dedicate 20 minutes a day for 30 days, how different would we be? So, um, like, if you go to wendy.com slash meditate, and you have to spell Wendy with an I, so wendy.com slash meditate. I'll um, put it in the chat box for everybody. Um, okay. I'm going to type it in right now, and because I don't trust my typing skills, as soon as I type it in, you'll see it on the right-hand side. Would someone just go, please, and test the link and tell me if it works? Would you go over there? So on the right-hand side, you should see it. Would you click on that and tell me whether it works or not? Yeah, it looks like you typed it right. So once you get to that page, I want you to go to the tab that says Listen Now. So there's a purple bar across the page. And there's one that says, or, yeah, or no, no, I'm sorry, what's in it? I want you to go to the, the link that says what's in it. And when you go to what's in it, you're going to see what I made for 20 minutes every day, 15 to 20 minutes for 30 days. So each one of these has space where I'm not talking, where you're exploring in your own personal way in the middle of the meditation so that is truly meditation and you're achieving less thought and stillness and then I come back at the end of each one and I bring your awareness back and ask you to find the lesson or to bring that into your day or into your life and you'll see all the topics but also today anyone who buys the, the
the basic version, not the premium one. You're going to get the premium bonuses today um, if you buy that. So the bonuses are the Wake Up Happy program, which is a meditation in the morning that's less than 15 minutes every day. There's eight of them. And you just, when you're waking up, just turn those on first thing and spend the first 15 minutes of your morning experiencing something that's going to totally change your day. I g absolutely guarantee it. It's going to give you a totally different day, especially if you do the gratitude one. You First of all, you need a lot of Kleenex because the gratitude is going to bring such immense tears of joy to your face. It just will wreck your face. <laughs> so, so anyway, and then you get the... Um, on the front page, the book is there for you free. If right. You go here, back to that, that front page. Is that here? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, on the page on the screen, and so there's a um, there's a free meditation session. It's one of your gifts here, and then you mm -hmm. see underneath it um, there's the download, and you can put that you can play that download on your computer. You can transfer it to your phone as you can transfer all of your sessions to a phone or an MP3 player. Um, and right here underneath that, you can right click the link. And if you do save link as, it will save the book to your um, computer. And then you just open it up and there we go. Yep. And the first full session is there. You don't have to opt in or anything. The first full session is on the page for you to listen to the audio and um, find out what's going on with this whole program. But you know, Harlan, most of the time, like a single session of mine will be 20 to $30. And so I did all 30 of these and um, it was a lot of work and fun and joy. But you're getting an immense amount of, um, of stuff that every one of them, if you're looking at those topics, is going to touch your life in some really special way. And I'm not just saying that because I want you to experience it. I'm saying it because I experienced it and it was every day was a new day. It was totally different than what I expected. And even now it just my eyes well up because it was so amazing what I experienced when I intentionally chose to bring in a, a gift of this thought today. And my whole day would be filled with that. Okay, now um, Joe asks, "What's the basic between the premium?" Um, that's that's a great question. However, for right now, as a special for the webinar, if you get the basic, Wendy is going to give you the premium. Right, um, exactly. You're getting all the bonuses on the premium. And, yeah. and uh, on that, and Joe, by the way, who asked that question, says, "Wendy, I listen to you every night um, and Aww. love your sessions." Uh, We're sleeping together. Yay! Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Wendy sleeps around, you know. She's she's probably <laughs> gone to bed with uh, twenty or thirty thousand people, um, you know, in her sleep meditation. And for those oh, of you who so don't, for those of you who, who don't know know me, because there are new people here. Some people do. I recently had um, surgery, and the last time I had the surgery, I was in agony. I was in agony and I was in pain and I was on opiate painkillers, you know, the same that killed Prince. Um, and they prescribed them and they re-prescribed them and they were prescribing all kinds of other things. The, I had the, the surgery had to be redone. And it, it's just uh, this Friday will be a month, except this time I went to the hospital with my little mp3 player that's right here and Wendy had given me access to some of her sessions and as soon as I could as soon as I was in my room and um, able to I had my son bring the bag and pulled out the mp3 player and I stuck it in my ears and I just blissed out now, the funny thing was, they kept trying to give me painkillers, and I kept saying, no, thank you, I don't need it. And in my bed, opposite my, my bed, there was a big sign, and it said, what's our pain level today? And they had, like, from 1 to 10. And I was going, like, where's zero? Where's zero? So I went through through meditation, 
They gave me a um, a prescription for painkillers, and I didn't even bother filling it because it wasn't necessary. So mm-hmm. I owe Wendy a public thank you for that. But I'm telling you, this stuff works. And it's really the key um, to a different kind of life. Um, and you will you will notice the difference. And the, and the funny thing is, not only will you notice the difference, but the people around you will notice, no, notice a difference in you as well. And heck, um, 30 uh, programs from Wendy for 47 bucks. That's like, that's like crazy insane. Um, yeah. I, a, lot I, of, a lot of sessions in there. It's amazing. Um, yep. so, I would jump all over this and get the bonuses. Um, is there a special link for this? Now you just click on the, the regular buy now and Wendy will make sure that you get the premium version. Um, right. And yes, because what I did is on the cart, on my shopping cart, which it will take you to, I actually added the downloads in that same, in the basic program of the um, morning meditations, um, the Wake Up Happy program. So those are already added in there when you download them all. Okay. Um, you got a lot of fans here who are saying thank you for this. But um, I want you to um, to try this. And... Um, I want you to try this and I want you to try this on me. Now, um, Wendy and I are friends and I'm doing this because I honestly believe that this is going to help you. But I'm going to say something here. If you go through the 30 day program, the entire 30 day program, um, and you don't notice a change and you don't feel better about anything, you contact me. And I will buy the program back from you. Okay. Oh my. Wow. I will buy the program back from you. And I say this in full confidence because I know that if you tell me, Harlan, I listen to third to the 30 days of the program and I don't notice a difference, um, then you know what? You went and you trusted us and you went ahead and did it. I, I will buy it back from you. So I am removing um, any possible thing. Um, Matt says, thank you, guys. I've been looking for a corner turn in my life. I think this is a great start. Um, So I want people, if you're hesitating, like you don't know if this is going to work, whatever, I got you covered. Um, I will send out a link um, to the recording to everybody. And if you've gotten the program, just save my email address. And um, if you purchase the program and listen to it for 30 days and it doesn't change your life, I don't think you should have to pay for it. So you just let me know and I will buy it from you out of my own pocket. That's how much I believe in the power of this program. Are there any last questions that you have for Wendy before we go? Remember the page, um, typing it in again, right over there in the chat. It's wendy.com forward slash meditate. Um, Any last questions, type them in. Um, We're about where I want it to be. We've gone just over an hour. Um, Hi, Wendy and Harlan. Thank you for all the good info. Do the meditations have music in them? As I do not like music in the meditation, I find it distracting to my ears and body. Yeah, I agree. Because most of the music, it it kind of has um, a thing that your brain is kind of following it. But what I have is the music that's in there is just like tones, very gentle tones. And there's some binaural beats in the background, very soft, very quiet. And the tones are just such that they, they don't really have like ups and downs. There's no rhythm. There's just... A kind of continuous gentle tone. Okay. So it should be okay. It shouldn't bother you too much. Um, if because I know the music sometimes it's too bouncy or there's a rhythm. You know, if there's a rhythm to the music, your brain and your heart locks onto that rhythm, and so then your body's trying to do something to stay connected to the music. We don't want that for sure. Okay. So um, someone asked which buy now button to click. We're going to have to change one of those buttons. Uh, because they're both the same, but 
the top button where it says $367 of smileage for only $47. That's the one you want to click. Don't click the one that says $67. Right, exactly. Yeah, just click the $47 one. And the first Buy Now button, the one on the top, that one also takes to that point. Also, there's live chat on my cart. Once you get there, if you have any questions, um, you can chat with me live. Okay, now um, Joe asks, when do you find after listening for weeks or months that your ears start to hear it differently? Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure. So what have you experienced, um, Joe? Do you do you hear it in another way or something or does it have a different message because maybe what you're asking like because this is something that isn't me telling you how to feel you're gonna have a different experience every time you listen to it for instance if you listen to um, one of the topics that is about um, just finding that bliss the bliss is going to come from a different source every time or it's going to feel different and it's going to be different in your body if you're listening to one that is about loving your body it's going to be a different experience you're just going to notice it in a different way because you're going to get a different lesson from it every time Joe says that he's listening and he hears different audio shifts in your voice I guess he's each time he listens he's paying attention to something a little bit different so oh yeah I can see that happening totally Again, so that's where it gets it's, it's because your awareness is growing. You're becoming yeah. more aware. Yep, yep. So, yeah, so I'm excited. And I really want all of you to stay in touch and talk to me on my Facebook page, you know, all what along is that the Facebook way. Facebook page? It is, I'm going to type it in, http.com, face, I'm sorry, facebook.com. Is it forward slash Wendy? It's, yeah, it's Wendy Friesen, just all one word, just my name. There you go. So click on the link and click like, and um, you'll be able to be in touch and follow what uh, the journeys of Wendy. Um, thank you so much, Wendy, for being with us um, tonight um, and, and for making this generous offer to our listeners. Stay in touch with um, Wendy on her page. Share with her about your experience. And let me know because I want to um, do it. Um, Aurelia says, I can't read the uh, buy now page. It's too small. Um, Aurelia, you can, um, um, you, there are different keys that you can press on your keyboard. Um, I don't know what computer you're on, but to make your screen bigger, um, look at the top of your browser and you should be able to think um, it's called view. You can make your screen uh, browser. Dale says I'm downloading now. Thank you both. W uh, enjoyed this very much. And you know what? This is the first time Wendy and I have done a webinar. I had a great time with it. Wendy, I hope you had a good time with it and we'll be back. I hope. To, um, to help you guys uh, make more incredible changes and help you grow. Wendy, your l last words. Oh, just, you know, if you're not sure that your life is going the way you want it, you know, just give yourself that 30-day challenge and just decide that you do have 15 minutes a day to set aside to find out how much better you can feel and how much different it could be after the first week and the second week and actually be going in a totally different direction in your life. So there's, I'm going to close with an old joke where a person goes to his teacher and says, I'm not sure I have time every day to meditate because there's so many things I need to do. Should I meditate or should I just focus on getting the important things done in my life? And the teacher said, you should absolutely meditate because then you'll find out that you really have more time for uh, meditation and that will help you accomplish more. So let's <laughs> yeah, it'll free up so many things in your life. Yeah. Let's really focus. Let's, let's do this together for the next 30 days and share our experience on, on, on Wendy's page. And for those of you who want to learn more about meditation, I'm going to type in here in the right. Uh, I'll say it out loud. 
for those of you who are on the replay, and that is um, facebook.com meditation techniques daily. That's my meditation uh, page. That's where I posted. Uh, I know Wendy sent it out to her list, but if you want to follow over there, and um, I'll be posting over there when Wendy and I are going to do something about uh, meditation or, or helping you grow your mind um, in some other way. So go ahead and, and like us over there. Um, you can like us, but we already love you. So thanks so much, folks, for uh, being with us tonight and spending the time. And um, both Wendy and I will be posting a replay. We would be so honored if you would share it with your friends when it appears. So thank you so much. Um, and everybody have a, a great night. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you so much, Harlan. Here's a big hug and kiss all the way from over here. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Thank laughs> Take care, bye -bye. everyone.